Welcome back to Best Kept Secrets. I'm your host, Lele Pons, and we've got an extra tasty episode for you guys this week because we're going to be talking about food phobias. I don't know about you guys, but I wasn't really that picky of an eater growing up. If there is, though, one thing I do hate eating is lobster. I don't know why. I just had a really bad experience when I was little. I ate lobster uh, with my knees when I was in the boat. I think I, I puked it all. I think it's because I was on the boat. But at the same time, I actually don't like it. I don't like it. It's in my head. Like, I, I just remember vividly, like, puking forever on the boat. And it was a fun day and I couldn't even, like, have fun. So I'm, like, traumatized from that. So I don't really like lobster. The following content contains adult subject matter, including sensitive material, and is intended for adult consumption only. It may not be suitable for all audiences. Therefore, discretion is advised. Lele Pons is not a trained expert, but is using her personal experiences and platform to create a space for sensitive discussions. And we should remember that there are big differences between just not liking a certain type of food and having a fear of it and having a genuine phobia. Not liking a food just means that you're probably generally avoiding it. You don't really like it. You, don't, you wouldn't want to like eat it when you have the chance to eat it. But if it does end on your plate, you're just going to be like, yuck. Like, or be like, oh, I don't want this. Oh, I'm not going to taste that. That's just avoiding it. Now, a fear is when you have an emotional response to a real or perceived threat. So that would be like worrying that if you eat a certain food, then it will make you sick or like have a panic attack or you're like truly afraid of it. A phobia is similar to a fear, but there's one key difference. The anxiety that people with phobias experience is so strong that it interferes with their quality of life and sometimes even their ability to function as a human. And it's even worse when the food they have a phobia for is very common. And that's the case for both our callers today. In a moment, I'm going to be talking to Skylar about her phobia of cheese, which is, my God, everywhere. You know, it's everywhere. Cheese is everywhere, especially if you go to some places like Europe, like Italy, everywhere. You can't do anything without cheese. And her fear is so powerful that just walking into a restaurant or grocery store can bring her into tears. But before that, let's hear from our first caller, Sasha, about what it is about oranges that makes her see red. We have Sasha on the line right now. Hey, Sasha. Hey, how's it going? I'm good. I'm good. Everything great. You're here today to learn about your secret. So what is it? So my secret is that I um, am a terrible liar, but I lie to almost everybody that I meet, coworkers, friends, longtime friends, family. And I tell everyone that I'm allergic to oranges, tangerines, clementines, any fruit that's orange in color that has a peel around it. Why? I- Why? I just cannot stand to be around it. I can't stand to be in the same room as it. I can't stand to see someone eating them. I can't stand to see the peels on the ground. It's just something in your body. Is it just like something you feel like you can't even like understand? Yeah, it's absolutely bizarre. And um, like parents don't get it. My partner doesn't get it. Everybody's always like, what is with this? Is it the color? Is it the smell? Is is it the juice? Have you always been afraid of oranges? What is it? (laughs) It is everything. I mean, it is everything from the fruit to seeing it inside of something to it's just the whole the whole package. I understand. I'm afraid of some things, too. My mom's a doctor. I'm afraid of needles. I understand. (laughs) You know, they don't even do anything to you. I know that. But you know what? I respect that you're coming out and talking to us about, you know, your fear of oranges. I'm not going to judge you. I understand because what you feel is real. And um, tell me more. Like, what do you feel? What's scary about oranges for you? So I don't, I don't, it's just a bizarre kind of reaction that I have and it's no one really understands it. So I used to tell people like, you know, like, oh, like, please don't eat oranges around me or I just can't, but no one really understands how like deep rooted this is go. But the second you say you're allergic to something, everyone like goes above and beyond to not eat near you, not show things to you, like put things away. This has always been something that you were afraid of or did something happen no i just always been around my mom has always tried to figure out like what is going on what has made you like horrified of oranges and she has no sympathy for me she drinks orange juice around me she's like all the time like wash my cup and i'm like absolutely not this is disgusting 
And what um, happens? What happens if you see an orange? What What is your reaction? I just like have to get away. Like I just I cannot be around them. Um, I like will walk across the street if there's like orange peel on the ground. I'll move my beach towel. I'll move my whole camp. I cannot deal with it. If it's on my plate, like at a diner or something, I have to, I like, you know, kind of have a panic attack and I hate inconveniencing people. So I don't send and, it back. But and have I you can't ever, deal with it. Have you ever tried to like get over your fear? I one time was set up with the ultimatum when I was maybe 13 or 14. My mom like said like, you know, you eat this orange. We can have ice cream. We can have a movie night. We can do this whole great thing. Aww, and so if she was you like don't, your therapist. Yeah, she's like, if you don't, then uh, that's it. You're going straight to bed. And my sister was like begging me, like crying, pleading to me. And I couldn't do it. And I was stuck with this ultimatum. And I like could not conquer this fear. And you made up that it, you were allergic to it. Yep. So then I just started telling everyone <laughs> that it was an allergy. I would do that too. Do you know? How, <laughs> do you know if people can re- like really be allergic to oranges? Do you think that's a thing? Um, I have never looked it up. I'm assuming that it's a thing, but I I haven't ever looked it up officially. You never know, man. You never know. The smell's <laughs> yeah. pretty strong, so it's pretty fragrant. And like people, for some reason, think that like it's okay to like litter orange peels because they like eventually biodegrade, but. As someone who's seen them like around my streets and stuff, they don't go that fast. And it's a, it makes it a big deal for me every time I have to walk across the street. What do you tell people that have contact with oranges? Like, what do you tell them, like strangers, like that have like that are with oranges? If they're a stranger, I'll like just try to avoid them. Um, but if it's like a coworker, like to all my coworkers, I instantly say it because it's like nothing worse than like sitting at your desk. And having someone next to you just like start eating and peeling an orange and then the peels in the trash can all day yeah. and they don't wash their hands and it's just not for me. Yeah. Is it is it just fruits? Is it just lemons? Is lime grapefruit? Lemons and limes are fine. I actually have a lemon tree. Um I like oh, love okay. limes. Yeah, grapefruits like aren't my favorite, but it's like not a big deal. But there's something about like oranges and tangerines that I just cannot, I can't deal with. So fuck orange juice either, right? Like fuck yep. that. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot deal with orange juice. None of that. I can't even wash the cup that the orange juice in. Doesn't make it no. better. Champagne. Yeah, champagne's great. Just, you know, hold, like I'll do lemonade mimosas. That's how I always hey, I kind love of get that. around it. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Listen. Listen, don't be, don't worry about anybody. Honestly, whatever they say about, if you're afraid of oranges, it's okay. I'm afraid of a lot of weird things that people don't understand. (laughs) And who cares? You know, like get something in your brain and you don't like them and that's it. That's it. (laughs) Well, thank you for understanding. It seems really irrational. So I'm just trying to, to get through with it. Can you look at the color orange? So that's the weirdest part about this whole thing is like the color orange is one of my favorite colors. My whole okay. kitchen is orange. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. The kitchen is orange? <laughs> the kitchen is orange. I have orange tile all over my kitchen. I love the color. I think it's like so bright and fun. I'm currently drinking coffee from a mug that's orange. Totally Wait, fine. Minute, what's going on here? That's <laughs> no. funny. It's just the fruit. I can't get past the fruit, the juice, the peel. No, I just no, no, thank you. Oh my god, orange soda or soap, body lotion. See, so here's the other thing. It's like orange soda. If it's like real artificial, like Fanta, like a drop of juice has never touched it. I could do that. I could do an orange soda. Okay. If okay. It's a natural soda where there's even a chance that there was a drop of orange juice in it. Absolutely, hell no. Get it away from me. Get away from me. Okay, we get it now. We get it. Thank you so much for sharing your secret. Thank you for talking about it. Maybe people are uh, afraid of oranges. You never know. Maybe a fruit. I know a lot of people that are afraid of things. So, Well, thank you for having me. And hopefully, you know, think twice, people, before you leave your orange peels everywhere. There's people (laughs) like me. I will. I definitely will. Thank you so much. You too. Bye-bye. Everybody's afraid of something. You never know what it is. Honestly, I'm afraid of needles. And my mom's a doctor, okay? So, and it's really weird that I am afraid of that. But if people are afraid of oranges, they are. And you know, it's something mental. Something you can't even explain. It's something you're born with. Something that happened. An experience that you that you had when you were a little kid. 
Maybe some some people are afraid of, you know, the smell or the the color. She doesn't even know what she's afraid of. And I think that it's kind of brave that she wants to talk about it because it is something so weird to talk about that you're afraid of oranges. They don't do anything to you, but she is. So we have to applaud the fact that she came here to this podcast. She talked about it and she she explained why she was she did what she doesn't like. And in one podcast, I am going to talk about my fears of needles, which is pretty bad. And I've done some weird things. And you know what? It is a weird thing because I just Googled like fear of oranges. And it is a pretty common thing. It is something that people do have. Like the people fear oranges. You can Google it. It's weird. I don't know. It has a weird name. So I'm not, I'm not going to say it, but it's, it's a real thing, guys. You can't judge something you don't understand. Aren't you glad that you guys are listening today? I mean, my God, I hate that joke. I'm so sorry, guys. Bye. I'm going to go. No, no, no. I'm not going to go. We're just going to take a quick break right now. And we're going to be back with Skylar. And we're back. We're going to talk to Skylar about her fear of cheese, which is something I love. Sadly, cheese is my life. But let's see why she's afraid of them. Skylar, we have Skylar on the line. Hi, how are you, Skylar? Hi, I'm so good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I am really curious to know what what are you doing here? What is your best kept secret? I know you have a lot of weird ones, but this one's pretty weird. Um, I have a phobia of cheese, and it's called turophobia, and I it like makes me really anxious when I look at it or smell it or just see pictures of it or anything like of that. Cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Well, listen, if, if it's actually a phobia that's well known and, and it's like you were diagnosed with a phobia like this, I mean, who is going to blame you? You're born like that. And then like, I can't I can't blame you. I can't judge you either. Like, I just want to know how how did it start and to explain it to everybody who doesn't understand? Yeah, I mean, look, I wish I could tell you how it started, because that would probably make it easier for me to get over it. But I don't really have um, a vivid memory of anything really crazy happening to me as a kid, which is usually, I think, how phobias start. But even when I was young, I just, my mom actually um, tells me stories about how she would like give me cheese in my meals, like mac and cheese or whatever pizza when I was young. And I would always just like pick at it and just eat like around it or try to just eat the stuff that wasn't really dipped in cheese. And then I would always say the smell made me like really sick. And I think she thought that maybe I was lactose intolerant, um, but that's not the case. Like I've, I've gone to check and I'm absolutely fine if I did eat it, but it's just, I can't, like, I can't look at it or smell it or anything. It's so bad. Did your family believe you when you, when you said you were scared of, of cheese or did they think that you were just being like picky? Um, I think like when I said it, when I was young, they definitely thought I was just being weird and picky and silly. Cause I was picky with a lot of food when I was young. It wasn't just cheese. I was just like a picky kid. So I think they thought I'd get over it. But like, as I got older, um, some of my other pickiness went away, but the cheese got worse. It got worse? Yeah, it got worse and worse to the point where um, I've had times where, like, I've cried because it's been around me for long periods of time. Or, like, it. Or, you know how there's so many different types of cheeses and some of them just look worse than others. And the ones that, like, look really moldy or have lots of holes, they make me, like, really oh my anxious. God, do not go to Italy because... That is the land of cheese. I have been too. It's like, yeah, I have to like, <laughs> it's really hard because cheese is literally everywhere, right? Like cheese is so common. Yeah, so common. Yeah. So, so I have to constantly go to places where I know I can avoid it. And I have to pretend like I'm lactose when I'm at a restaurant because I want to make sure that the chefs like don't even have any cheese or any kind of smell of cheese anywhere near my plate. So I'm like, excuse me, I'm extremely lactose. And I just lie and tell them that because I don't know how else to, I don't want to like tell them that I'm scared of cheese because they're going to think I'm crazy. Yes, it is weird, but it's not like, oh my God, like that's fucking messed up. It's something you have. And I mean, how do your parents and your and your friends react to your fear? Were you were you teased? Did you try to keep it a secret growing up? Yeah, I try to keep it a secret from as many people as I can. Obviously, like my parents and my sister know since I was a kid. And then my closest friends definitely know because it's unavoidable in conversation when we yeah. go out to eat. But I there's a lot of people out there who I hang out with like, 
that aren't super close to me, just like acquaintances, um, they don't know. I just, I just try really hard to avoid anything. Like when they ask me where we should go eat, I'll just pick like a vegan place just to, just to avoid it. Just if they say, Oh, let's get a slice of pizza. Then I'll say, Oh no, like it, that makes my stomach hurt and I'll just lie. But they don't know that I'm actually just scared of like looking at it. <laughs> you must be so happy to get like the dessert. The weird thing is like cheesecake doesn't really bother me, which is, is weird because it's like the texture of it isn't cheesy. It's more like cakey. So um, that's one thing that I don't actually mind. Like I can, oh, I can okay. do cheesecake. It's not my favorite. It's not my favorite, but like if it's around, I'm not going to freak out. But if it's like, if the worst is like the, even like fondue, just like the meltiness of it, uh, that makes my skin crawl. I cannot handle that at all. Oh, I've never heard of, of such thing, but I'm glad that you're talking about it right now with us. And is there any kind of cheese that aren't, that you're not afraid of, or you're afraid of every single cheese, like even vegan cheese? Um, So with, with vegan cheese, obviously, like, because in my mind, like phobias are all like in your head somehow right so in my head i know that vegan cheese is not cheese so like vegan cheese is fine because even though it's like it looks like it or it doesn't actually give me that sort of creepy feeling um but when it comes to like actual cheese the only cheese that doesn't really bother me as much is cottage cheese um because i don't know i had that like a lot as a kid i think it just kind of stuck with me that cottage cheese is just like it, I don't know. It just isn't as cheesy. or <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it's just white and kind of just doesn't really look, give me that sort of cheese sensation. But I mean, most people think cottage cheese is gross. <laughs> I know I'm crazy. I must be. <laughs> I'm like the opposite, but uh, blue cheese is literally the worst thing I could think of. I can, I can smell it right now and it's not even near me. Like I know exactly what it looks like. It's like, and it makes me want to vomit. Like, I'm shaking just talking about it. Have you talked to a therapist about your fear of cheese? No, because, like, I don't... Okay, I know therapists aren't supposed to judge you, and they're supposed to just help you. And I I rationally get that. Like, I'm mature enough to understand that. But I, I also feel like when we're done with our therapy session, I know they're not supposed to tell anyone, but I feel like they're going to talk about it. They're going to go home to, like, their husband or wife and be like, I just talked to a girl who's afraid of cheese. And... That embarrassment to me is worth just not telling, like not even trying to. Trust me, they're super professional. Trust me when it comes to that. They are. And so are doctors. I know. I just, I can't, I can't bring myself. Like, what do I say? What do I tell them? Like, I can't be around cheese. Like, how are they going to, how in the world are they going to like fix that? I don't know. Exposure therapy, maybe. Being around cheese and, and knowing that's not, nothing's going to happen. Is your fear something you can live with or do you really want to try and overcome it? I have like an angel and devil on my shoulder and like the angel says definitely you want to overcome it because you can enjoy a lot more things. You can go out with more people. You can try new stuff and not be so anxious. Um, and the devil is like, absolutely not. We are not putting you anywhere near anything that looks or smells or tastes like that. So I have this constant battle every day. I think it's less about being able to eat cheese, just more about your mental health and not feeling so anxious when you're around it. Yeah, I mean, that is definitely important. I Maybe after talking to you, I might consider therapy for it. I have thought about it so many times and I've always like put it off and like, no, I'm not going to do that today. I'm not going to do that. But now I feel like I should. Definitely. You should do it because cheese, sadly, it's a it's one of the most common foods in the world. I mean, it's 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 a topping. So it's an, on everything. You know what happened when you have kids and and they love it. I, I don't know. Like I, it, it's hard for me to even go grocery shopping because obviously I can avoid like certain aisles and stuff, but then every now and then I'll go to a store that I'm not familiar with. And I end up just like walking past like a cheese counter and, or like a, you know, where they have samples. And I've, I've literally had like a panic attack before because there was so much cheese in one place and it smelled so strong. I, I walked away and I, and I cried in the grocery store. I've, I've really be, like, I really benefited from exposure therapy and therapy in general. So I highly recommend it. It's very worth it. What was your exposure therapy? If you don't mind me asking, because that makes me feel better. <laughs> well, uh, I'm obsessed with like door handles. I know a, a girl one time in my like class, like a patient was like obsessed with the uh, drinking um water from the ground 
yeah like rainwater yeah. That, that, yeah so you know what i mean it's like but that's obsessive and then like, there was one person who was obs- like scared of going outside you know going outside so she would like she was just stay home for a year without even stepping outside she's just scared of outside you know like it, it could take over your life unless you have therapy and all these people that i'm talking about it probably forgot about those ph- phobias you know so and they're so much better all of them that i'm talking about me even me i don't care about door handles and stuff but in one point i, I did yeah and i was scared of many things too okay so. i feel like you are maybe the first person that's sort of convincing me to do that because only like a handful of people know about it anyway so I, maybe the maybe if i talked about it more people would be able to like convince me or help me but i just i've been too embarrassed to bring it up because i just think it's so strange like i know that it's weird definitely, and it's gonna happen definitely to should bring it up <sighs> oh gosh makes me feel better just like talking about it. <laughs> that's good see at least you you were able to talk about it with us and on and know that it, no one's gonna judge you for this it's completely normal we all have fears some are different than others of course but hopefully next time that you come here um you talk about your recovery or like all the the stuff that you've gone through to to get yourself better yeah no that that, that motivates me to want to do it but because i'm like my palms are sweating right now just thinking about it so um i will take that into consideration yeah. after this. thank you so Bye. much for sharing with us thank you for having me bye bye I'm happy that um, I helped her. Today was the first step for her to overcome her fear by talking about it, you know, and thinking, reflecting, maybe I should go to therapy. Maybe I should do this and that. So I, hopefully I helped her because this 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 can take over someone's life. You know, maybe it's not that bad, but maybe instead of it being, and this is for everybody who's listening, instead of being cheese, it could be doors. It could be sidewalks. It could be cars, you know, and and it could take over your life. Trust me, I have a cousin who's afraid of flying and he has never gone into a plane before and he has to drive. If he if wants if he wants to come to America, he will. He can't. He just can't. He's in Europe. But if he wants to go from Paris to Spain, he will do it in car. He can't fly. So it will take over your life. And, you know, therapists don't do that. Therapists are people that are professional. That's why people go to them because they're not going to talk about their problems that's that's it's just a sacred oath you do therapists and doctors do that so they're not there to judge they're there to heal so believe me from my experience Thank you so much to Sasha and Skylar for calling in today. It really seems that they were both so happy to get their secrets off their chest. And that's why I love this show. Before we go any further, I just want to take a moment to address Skylar's hesitation about going to a therapist. She talked about the fact that she was worried her therapist might laugh at her fears. And that's not going to happen. Even for people who actually think that and are listening to that right now, they're not going to do that. They're professional. It's, it's actually an oath they take. You can't. You can't say anything. And if they are professional, and you can find out if they are, that's it. Like, they can't do it. So don't worry about that. If you're if you're afraid to go to a therapist for that reason, that's out of the question. Therapists go into their profession because they really want to help people. So while I know it's a little scary at first, it's important to remember that therapists are on your side. I mean, I know it's scary to tell someone your secrets and everything. I mean, who is this person? But they're trained for this. They will know what to say better than other people can. So they're there to help you get over or manage the things that you're struggling with. So I encourage Skylar and anybody else considering to, you know, give it a try because I know how much it helped me. And that's my experience. So I know it's going to help you. And that's why I recommended exposure therapy to her. My exposure therapy was structured around an obsession I had with door handles and other things, but it really did help me a lot. And it's not so much about getting Skylar to start eating pizzas and cheese sandwiches. No, it's more about helping her live a life without constantly having fear or anxiety while being around the cheese. I really feel for these girls because oranges and cheese are everywhere. And if you've been listening to this show for a while, you'll know that I have a serious fear of needles. I mean, thank God that that, that they're not everywhere, but they're very important for you to be healthy. Uh, I've done some crazy things, though, to avoid them. Like, I've literally locked, like, myself in a room so the doctor couldn't come in. And I locked my mom outside, like, the the emer- like the emergency room. So I've done a couple crazy stuff so I can avoid it and um, other stuff. So at the end of the day, I can go weeks and months without ever seeing or thinking about needles, thank God. But for them, it's a little bit different. These girls don't have that luxury, unfortunately, because the things they fear are such everyday foods that it's impossible 
Talking to Sasha and Skylar today made me wonder whether a lot of people right now, you know, have fear of food. So I'm throwing it over to you guys. My question of the week is, do you have a food phobia? Head over to Atleta Ponds to vote in the poll and let me know if there are any particular types of foods that give you fear. Okay, that's our show for this week. Thank you guys so much for listening. Stay safe. Don't throw your orange peels on the floor. And we'll be back next Wednesday with some more brand new episode of Best Kept Secrets. If you or someone you know are struggling emotionally, text START to 741-741 for a confidential chat anytime. Thanks for listening to Best Kept Secrets with me, Lele Pons, only on Spotify in partnerships with Shot Studios. The Shot Studios original team includes creators John Shahidi and Sam Shahidi, my lovely producer Belinda Mercer, and audio editor Stephen Colon. From Spotify Studios executive producers Javier Pinot, Liz Gailey, Gina Delvac, and Danny Trebod. And a special thanks to Dan Behar, Jessica Molina, Francisco Quijada, and Julio Pabon. I'm Lele. Follow me on Instagram at Lele Pons and check out my exclusive merch at lilshop.com. That is lilshop, L-I-L, shop.com. Talk to you next week. <laughs>